Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again with another G.I. Joe action figure review. In this episode, we're taking a look at the G.I. Joe 25th Anniversary Comic Pack featuring Destro and Corporal Breaker. Or as most of us know him, just Breaker. Uh, weird copyrighty stuff where they had to uh, give them their little names, uh, ranks as part of their name. Yeah, we'll not get into that, but this is again part of the 25th anniversary release. Very nice looking package here. It includes a classic comic inside with a new revamped cover that pays homage to that original comic from the uh, Marvel Comics line. Very cool looking. We do have the character art here at the bottom here. Flipping it over onto the back side, we've got a little description of, you know, what the actual comic was, the Destro Attacks, issue number 14 from the original comics. We got a couple of the other two packs available, and also a little blurb about the mail-in exclusive opera for Operation Rescue Doc. Very cool. I'm going to have to uh, drag that one out at some point and do a review for that figure as well before too long, so... Stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and just dive into this comic pack and see what this thing's all about. I uh, got a handy dandy here exacto knife, so we're just going to carve this thing up a bit. I am not worried about the packaging because, uh, yeah, because I don't keep it in the package. So, obviously. Um, yeah, give me just a second to get this sliced open. Pretty easy. Not bad. Careful not to cut the comic there. And then this just kind of folds up. And we'll pull this tray out with the little insert. And we'll go ahead and free the comic inside. Ooh, and there is the uh, little mail-in offer for Doc, if I can get it to come off of the tray, along with the file cards. So very cool there. Um, after that, it's just left with a plain little tray here. We've got the nice Joe symbol on the top and the little Cobra symbols at the bottom. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Throwing that to the back side over here. Uh, we also get this little insert here. Nice looking. We've got the UPC code at the bottom. Uh, weapon supplier for Destro and communications officer for Breaker. Very cool, but also not something I need to keep. So I'm tossing it to the side as well. And we will zoom in on the figures here in a moment. But uh, first, let's take a look at the comic here. Number 14, Destro Attacks. Uh, very nice kind of... Um, re-release of this reprint, I guess, of that original G.I. Joe number 14. So they're calling it a tribute issue, 2008. Give us a little brief synopsis of what happened before this. And there's some uh, very cool looking characters here. And we'll just flip through this real quick. The paper is pretty nice. Much nicer than the original comics came out on. There is a breaker with his bubble gum. Very, very cool. I haven't read this comic in a very long time, but yeah, that's pretty awesome. Some Star Wars stuff from Hasbro. More Destro goodness there. Something blew up. <laughs> and the new reimagined Snake Eyes. So, there's the comic. We'll put that over here somewhere to the side here. And let's take a look um, at this insert. Got a little piece of tape here. Holding the little bag closed. 
So let's try <laughs> to cut that real quick and dump this out. And inside of here is this little sticker thing. It's uh, easy to lose, but that is your uh, Operation Rescue Dock proof of purchase. You basically uh, get, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six of these and attach them to your insert there and you can mail away and get your free dock figure. Go ahead and uh, pull this out so you can kind of read it a little bit here. Uh, you, this is not valid anymore, obviously, because they stopped doing this a long time ago. Uh, had to be postmarked by August 31st, 2008. So, yeah, that's quite a ways off, but very cool. And then a little Cobra Commander ransom note. Very nice. Brings back some good memories there. Our two file cards have the nice black back on it. We've got one for Breaker. Y'all can pause it here to read through. And then one for Destro. Very, very cool. So there's our file cards and the little mail-in insert. And then we have the figures left here. So let's go ahead and uh, pop this thing out. Some cool looking accessories in here. We got our figure stands. We got Destro here. We got a pistol taped in over here. Pop that out. We got Breaker, whose uh, pistol is also taped in. Weirdly. And we'll get to that accessory here just in a moment. Backpack. And his communication headset. And uh, one easily lost little part here is uh, a nice little throwback and very easily lost. It is a little uh, bubblegum bubble piece. <laughs> very nice. So they'll toss this tray off to the side here and uh, move this stuff kind of to the center. And let's zoom in and uh, take a closer look, shall we? Let's see, somewhere about right there should do good for us. How's that? Looks pretty good. Get the camera to quit shaking on us. All right. Uh, let's start here with Destro. Uh, we do have his pistol here is a uh, kind of rubber band on. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that rubber band. Let that go flying wherever it wants to go. And we'll take his pistol out here and look at those individually here. Let's look at the uh, figure stand first. Uh, traditional 25th anniversary figure stand. The nice raised Cobra logo. One single foot peg on here. Codename Destro at the front. The 2007 copyright. Very cool. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and look at breakers as well. I never really understood why. Uh, for this one, it's the raised G.I. Joe logo. But it has two foot pegs instead of the one for the bad guys. So I never understood why they did that. But they did. 2007 as well. Corporal Breaker. So... Uh, regardless, the figure stands are really awesome, great to have. So, for Destro, we have two pistols here. And we'll try to get this close up here so we can see some of the detail in it. Nice looking pistol. It uh, Again, I'm not a weapons expert by any means, so 
I don't know exactly what model this is. It kind of reminds me of a Glock, but not exactly. So, and then our second smaller pistol is this one right here. Again, some nice looking details. Very cool. And he does have a single pistol holder holster. Um, the big pistol fits in there fairly decently. Well, not really, actually. If you get it lined up correctly, it'll kind of slide in there. But you can see it kind of sticks up a little bit. The smaller pistol fits in there a lot snugger, though. So I would tend to think that would be the one that you would stick in there just because it looks a little better. But uh, sadly, he can only hold one pistol in the holster. The other one he'll have to uh, hold in his hands. Oop, there we go. <clears throat> so speaking of hands, let's take a look at the actual Destro figure here. Uh, this one is really nice looking, so it's meant to be more like uh, the comic colors, I guess is the way they tend to refer to this as. So it's got a nice kind of uh, grayish blue suit. His metal gauntlets are a nice kind of sky blue metallic color. And he's got this kind of light purplish lavender for the rest of his highlights, plus the red. Very nice silver faceplate. You can see the cool detail there in his face. Looks very nice. He's got the cool necklace. Some really nice detail in the overall figure itself. You know, Destro's kind of a bigger guy, so he's got a nice big upper body. You can see folds all the way around his clothing. Some nice texture work in the belts. Those grenades look really awesome. His uh, little rockets on his other wrist. Cool buckles on his uh, holster there. You can see the nice little texture on those straps as well. Slightly raise this light up a little bit. Some decent detail on the boots, nothing major, but again, some cool folds in that clothing there. So, very cool looking. I like this figure a lot. I uh, wasn't sure about the colors on this one, but, um, you know, it looks pretty good, actually. So, I don't really have a problem with it at all. I kind of like the way the colors look. As far as articulation goes, the head itself is kind of stuck here. It does spin at 360 degrees. It has a little bit of up and down motion, a little bit of side head tilt, nothing too major there. Uh, his little, uh, whatever, popped collar thing doesn't get in the way of anything, so that's cool. Uh, ball and swivel at the shoulder joints, ball and swivel at the elbow joints, and we've got that swivel at the uh, mid-wrist, uh, forearm, whatever, the top of the gauntlets. <laughs> We also have the uh, waist twist or chest twist, I guess you would say. Nice ab rocker motion there. Pretty good there. No actual waist twist, but uh, standard plastic T... Or sorry, these are metal. Metal T-hooks at the waist. Full forward motion. About there backwards. Let me turn his arm around. About there for the back. Uh, really nice side to side. We do have a single knee joint on this one. And then we've got a swivel and a rocker here at the ankle joint. So fairly good articulation on this guy. I'm not sure about why they ended up going with the single knee joints. I think that's just the fact that that's just the way this mold ended up being, I guess. But yeah, that's a little odd, but nothing too bad. Still a nice looking figure here. Let's move on to Breaker. 
Uh, he has a single pistol here. He also has another pistol in his uh, holster on his side. So we'll go ahead and pop that out. Uh, other accessories he's got. He has this cool web uh, helmet communication gear that we'll pop off here and look at. And his bubblegum thing here. <laughs> uh, let's start with the backpack here. Uh, it is a very weird looking communications rig, um, but it's more, I guess, standard. It, it looks very much like it was modeled off of something out of the uh, Vietnam War or something like that. I don't really know specifics on it, but it's got some nice tooling on it. It's got two hose attachment points which go to the helmet here. So I'm assuming you can use either one. I think it was plugged into this uh, bottom one for whatever reason, but it uh, fits a little easier here in the top one. I'm not really sure if that's just the way it is or the way it's molded or what, but uh, I would assume it probably should go in that one. <laughs> so very cool. And then it uh, just, plugs into his back there so um while we're at it let's go ahead and look at the helmet itself some very cool communication gear it will slide up on top of his head slide up like this it moves around it's on this little hinge joint here so you can pop that off and attach it to any other helmet uh, the helmet itself is just kind of that standard green shirt trooper helmet that was uh, very popular at the very beginning of the gi joe run Nice little hose coming out the back side. Some cool dials. Very nice looking. Cool microphone there. So we'll pop that back on his head here. And you can see here you can uh, adjust it up and down to whatever way you want it to go. And it looks really cool. So that's nice. We'll pop that back off there. Uh, he's got two pistols here, and that's bubblegum. <laughs> the pistols look like they are basically the same. If I can get it up. <laughs> Fairly interesting detail work there. They got a little bit of texture there on the slider. Really nice. And then the second pistol looks to be the same to me. Kind of standard sidearm. He does have two holsters here, one on his uh, web gear and one on his uh, right thigh. Those pistols fit in there very easily. Nice snug fit there so it's not gonna fall out doesn't go all the way through so yeah <laughs> but still very cool looking we'll go ahead and slide this one in here as well may have to move his arm around a little bit to get it to go in there but uh, locks into place very nicely very easily and those don't fall out so that's cool all right we'll pop those out put them down here on the side now, the uh, other little accessory here is this nice little bubblegum thing. Uh, it's a cool little effect here in uh, the comics and the cartoon. He always had bubblegum chewing it and things like that. So um, it's got a little peg hole. You probably can't see that, but it does have a little peg hole there. So I'm not really sure exactly where that attaches to. I'm going to assume we can attach it to the uh, microphone here. So let's just try that and see. And it does. It fits right on there on the microphone mic. So you can uh, stick his helmet back on there. And it looks like he's uh, blowing a bubble. So <laughs> that is a very cool little effect here. You do have to have the mic adjusted just right to get it to do that but looks pretty cool uh doesn't look right from the side but from the front it looks like he's blowing a bubble so that's that's pretty cool i like that so 
I don't know if that's supposed to go somewhere else, but it, it fits like that pretty easily. So and I guess you could probably stick it, wedge it in here between the two. Like, well, that doesn't work too well. So I guess it's only supposed to go on the microphone. So easy to lose, but uh, a very cool little small accessory. So <laughs> moving on to the actual figure itself of Breaker. We got a nice... Uh, interesting head sculpt here and we'll see if we can get this to not blow out a little bit that's not too bad so i don't know how well this kind of shows up on screen or not but he does have some face stubble a little beard thing there it also kind of looks like he's got a jaw full of bubble gum kind of like he's chewing it over here on the right so that may just be the way it ends up turning out but it's interesting anyways but uh pretty decent head sculpt nice haircut and everything like that looks really nice i am really surprised that they got that that face double painted in there like that again it doesn't pick up really well on the camera but it's in person it looks very interesting uh beyond that we've got uh, the standard kind of uh web gear turn this camera light back up grenades nice detail work on its pouches kind of the standard more pouches again nice little uh, cross hatching on the web gear there beyond that it's basically the standard uh, green shirts body not a lot of detailing on the clothing um nice boots though some nice texture work there yeah pretty nice looking kind of a standard you know original joe kind of feel to it we do have a standard 360 degree on the head up and down is really nice lots of side head tilt as well standard ball and swivel at the shoulder joints standard ball and swivel at the elbow joints we got that uh, mid forearm swivel. Same thing on the other side. Uh, the chest twist or um, rib cage twist feature. The web gear is not getting any in the way of ab crunch or anything like that. So it's very nice. We have the standard uh, metal T hooks there at the waist and hips. So full front motion about there, back motion, full side to side. We do get double knee joints on this guy, so that is cool. And then the standard uh, swivel and rocker here at the ankle joint. So all in all, really nice articulation. A little bit better than uh, on Destro because of that double knee joint. But the figure looks really awesome here. I like it a lot. Uh, let's go ahead and get him geared up here. And let's see how this fits on here. Go with the backpack. Stick his helmet on here. If I can get it to line up and not be in his eyes. Plug that little uh, hose thing in right here. Very cool. Those uh, hinge joints on that tend to pop out a little bit not too badly now uh, we'll go ahead and put a single pistol in his hand it is a bit loose here i'll point that out which is kind of a shame <laughs> and we'll stick his other pistol in his holster if i can get it <laughs> like so it looks really nice here um yeah, that uh, one hand is just really loose on that pistol there. So, um, yeah, that's a cool breaker figure. It uh, very much reminds me of the original 
figure from back in the vintage line. So really great job there on that uh, update. Uh, Destro is pretty cool too. Um, I actually like the colors very well on this Destro figure. Um, I wasn't thinking I would, but they did end up uh, surprising me with that. His uh, left hand is very weird though. Uh, as far as the grip goes, he barely has any any grip on that whatsoever so it's really hard to put like a pistol in his hand but uh his right hand doesn't have that problem whatsoever so yeah that's uh very weird but and we'll take the other pistol and stick it in the holster and there we go we got destro and breaker so very cool looking uh, set here of two figures. Um, I like the Destro figure better, but I really do like the Breaker figure. So I think probably Breaker is a little bit better of a figure. Uh, the color scheme just really kind of is what does it for me with Destro. So I'm really glad about that. I don't know why, but I, I think it's the purple that I'm... I like purple, so whatever. The uh, little gum bubble thing is uh, very interesting. I wished it worked a little bit better than it does, but it's still interesting. So uh, this pack is uh, fairly easy to come by, not too bad on the secondary market, but uh, you know your mileage may vary. It's getting a little old in the, old now, so it came out in 2008, 2007, somewhere in that area. So it's been out here for like 12 years now, so yeah. Anyways, it's a cool set. Very nice little uh, comic two-pack. Well, that's all the time we've got for today, so thanks for watching. Drop some comments down below. Let us know what you think of this comics two-pack with Destro and Corporal Breaker. I'm pretty excited about it. I like it a lot. Uh, I got to figure out some way of making the little bubble thing work a little bit better, but uh, you know, if you have suggestions for that, drop those in the comments section as well. Uh, if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Yeah, <laughs> until next time, yo Joe!